morning, everyone. I'm Li Dechen from uh, Idaho. I'm going to be presenting the solid particle and nutrient distribution in flushing liquid dairy manure uh, with two co authors, Kevin Kruger and Howard Nibley. Uh, in fact, Kevin did most of the NAB analysis. Uh, today, we'll give you a brief uh, project background and show you what we did and what have we found. I think uh, uh, our dairy ha kind of have a unique challenge. So in term population, Idaho is a kind of small country, but Idaho did have a very strong dairy industry. Idaho, I think, follow California and Wisconsin race against New York, or maybe race with state of New York for a third place. Uh, very close. Sometime, some year we are three, some year New York three. Within maybe the milk product, just one milk cows. So that's why I, think I heard our dairyman joke. Uh, say, we notice our open up dairy just enjoy ice skating during winter. They, they didn't take very seriously on the, on the race. <laughs> that's why we lost our third place. So. Anyway, so right now I don't have about uh, 500 dairies with 580,000 milk cows. About 60% dairies and over 70% milk cows are located in the Magic Valley, Southern Idaho, very small area. We very concentrated there in four counties. Four counties. The average uh, cows per dairy in Magic Valley around uh, 1,400, 1, uh, Some have uh, over 10,000 dairy milk cows on a single site. We have many over 3,000 milk cows. Um, so our dairy is different from others. Most of our dairy have open nut and installed barns, put a half of dairy cows on open nut, half in the, in the barn. So we don't use sand as bedding. Only in the winter, they put some straw on open nut. Summer, they do nothing, just let the water evaporate into the air. But they use uh, compost as bedding material in, in the barn. Uh, typically, compost uh, undigested fiber from there a screen separator, so we don't use a uh, bedding. Another large dairy tend to use a uh, liquid manure handling system because they're easy of mechanization and uh, many low labor requirements. So some of our <coughs> large dairy use a uh, flushing system, resulting large quantity of uh, liquid manure in the lagoon, and later apply when their pivot system to the near round. Uh, Crop land. I just give you an example. We have uh, see 4,000 milk cows dairy. They have uh, 16 feeding alleys. That, that said, 16 lands. They need flushing three times per day. Each time, they need 10,000 gallon for each land. So together, roughly half million gallon liquid. The, the water they need flushing there their lands. Uh, of course, they will reuse their uh, flushing water. Some there have a settling basin, uh, some don't. They're just flushing the water flow to a central receiving pit. From there, the pump to an inclined screen. Uh, after setting up the, the larger particles will go to the lagoons. So if you have uh, four or five thousand cows, maybe you have a typical two or three, 10 million gallon lagoon there. So most use the online pipe link the lagoon water to their pivot system. So that's kind of, so this kind of setting since all country in a s small area, so the nutrient solids in the, in the liquid uh, did pose a number of challenges to our the manure handling process. See the liquid manure with high solids to flow to the lagoon that some of the solids will settle down to the bottom of the lagoon. So eventually you need to clean your lagoon, get all the solids out, so restore your capacity. That's that's really a financial burden for for producers. Uh, typically they need uh, one penny per 
gallon capacity. So that said, if you, if you clean at 10 million gallon a gun, each time it costs hundreds of dollars. So depending on how well your separation system work, some there even just a couple of years and need to clean there and it will cost hundreds of dollars. That's, uh, yeah. Another high nutrient, especially phosphorus, so limited their application rate. Lower rate means you need a larger area for the same amount of uh, liquid. Liquid, normally they will not track and hold the manure away. If over two mile, I'm sure it will more than one penny per gallon. That's another, that's a big amount if you, if you consider the huge amount of liquid there. Um, another, if you have a high solids, definitely need a, the, have a higher potential plug of the, the pump pipe and, and the spring nozzles, and also require higher power and higher pressure at the pump increase the risk of rupture, seals, and uh, manure uh, spills. Uh, some of our Darien report their high solid manure applied to their fernand even seal the surface of their land, so preventing water goes through the, the soil. That's really bad. Um, of course, you have a higher solid and a nutrient in the manure, one little higher volatilization ammonia and other from the storage in the gong and uh, manure applied in the end. Uh, so definitely our dairymen want to do a better job uh, separating more solids and nutrients from their liquid manure and not only reduce the overall manure handling costs that they, they really talk about the environment. Um, so they, they consider the solid separation as their priority. They request the information, what's real the, the solid distribution and the nutrient link to each different group of the solids. So that information, I believe, will help them choose uh, suitable separation technology, equipment, make better manure nutrient use and uh, manure man uh, nutrient management plan. So that's, that's why we did this uh, research. <clears throat> yeah, what we did, we went to three different dairies, they're uh, different size and they're use, uh, reuse their water just differently. Uh, some there maybe end of the cloud, they have more water, they they not use too much their reflushing water. But some there that really have a limited water access, they need to reuse their water many, many times. So that's three different dairy uh, in Magic Valley or in Southern Idaho. We remove five gallons of liquid from their receiving pay to bring back to the waste management lab at the UFI Twin Falls uh, Research Intention Center. So triplicate, uh, triplicate sample analyze for the solid content, uh, particle density, particle size distribution, and uh, the total nitrogen T and total phosphor <coughs> link with each group of the particles. Uh, the solid content analyze using a drive oven, we just put a fixed amount of liquid there, dry, get the solid content. Uh, for the particle size distribution, we use a set of six sieves mesh size from four millimeter, uh, four millimeter, two millimeter down to 0 0.063 millimeter, combined with a hydrometer measured for the particle smaller than the 0 0.063 millimeter. We run the hydrometer measured at a six different time point, I mean from two minutes, 15 minutes, then 60 minutes, then maybe 250 minutes, then one day and two days. Kind of time consuming test. Get a, so based on stocks, now we get another six different group of uh, diameters. Uh, this is a sieve the particle we use for the particle density analysis. Uh, 
So the density was analyzed using a pycnometer with a national meter for the particle size, the six group from the sieves, and we group all together for the finer particle, smaller than 0 0.063 millimeter, we do the particle density analysis. And this, this number, uh, we use uh, density for the group smaller than 0 0.063 for the hydrometer method. Uh, piping method we use together with a hydrometer method to to track liquid manure sample for for the TNTB analysis. Both the pipe piping method and the hydrometer method based on stocks now, assuming so larger heavier particle will set down faster. So their equation we, we can do that calculation. So the TN and TP were analyzed using the hex spectrophotometer based on hex method. So in brief, so when we get a manure for the lab, we first we get all the TN TP total solids. So before each saving, before and after each saving, we'll remeasure all these things so that way we know how many grams in this group, how many nutrients linked to this group. But beyond the saves, we rely on the pipette. So at a two minutes, we uh, extract the manure from as 10 centimeter from top. We get a manure sample through the TNT <coughs> and nice. as another 15 minutes, we get another sample. So this way, based on mass balance, uh, we can know the uh, solid distribution and associated nutrients. So this is a... Uh, so the total solid T and TP from the three there is uh, kind of from a little less two point percent of solid to a little over four percent. That's that's a solid content from the flushing dairy. Uh, there, there T and TP also vary there from dairy to dairy, uh, but look to me, not too much difference. This is a. Uh, uh, solid particle density from the three dairies, pretty similar on the three dairies. Uh, range I think from 1.32 gram per cubic centimeter for the larger group, four millimeter group, uh, to the 2.2 gram cubic centimeter for the finest group. Uh, so smaller particles tend to have a little higher density. That makes sense. But if you compare with uh, commonly used soil particle density, 2.65, this the organic matter definitely is smaller than that. That said, so if you are setting a basin design based on the 2.65, uh, the soil particle density will not work well for, the, for setting out the organic matter in our area since we, we don't use a, a sand as bedding material. Uh, this solid particle distribution uh, got a 12 group. We notice there, there are just higher bedding fiber in the liquid from their DD. We didn't get rid of that. That's why we see much higher solid in the four millimeter group. Otherwise, uh, they're different, but not much. Since most of the screen used on our dairy, the pore size is not 0.5 uh, millimeter. I have all the data from each group, how many percent, but if we group the top three together, uh, roughly 21, 49, and 33 solids, larger than half millimeter uh, from the, the liquid from the three there, uh, respectively. Um, so kind of generally, if uh, I will see maybe a third of the solid will screen out if you use screen at a size point uh, five millimeter screen size. This is a TN associated with each particle diameter group. See here, even the solid have a higher percent in the 
their DD, but because mainly it's a bedding fiber, they have a lower TN in that group. Uh, so again, if a group of the top three together, there are 33 or 34 or 7 and 44% TN associated with a particle larger than half a millimeter in the liquid manure. Uh, but of course, you know, separating nitrogen kind of is not a focus of a derm, and they, they are not <laughs> worried about too much on the, on the nitrogen in their liquid manure since they, they irrigate it to the, to the crop. I think sometimes they still add some commercial nitrogen there. Uh, but definitely they are kind of uh, care about the solid. <laughs> this is a TP link to each different group uh, here can you see most TP associated with the finer particles. With group top three, they're only say 14%, 20%, and 14% TP associated with a particle larger than half a millimeter. Uh, so this data suggests if you want to get more, more the phosphorus out of your nuclear, definitely need to do something beyond the screen and consider uh, other advanced uh, technology equipment. I'm almost there, so this is kind of take a message. The density range from 1.3 to 2.2 uh, is much smaller than the soil particle density 2.65. Uh, if you design new setting basin, you need to consider this. Uh, percent solids with particle size larger than half millimeters, around 21, 49, and 33 percent. Again, if we are so high the bedding material, I would suppose third of your your particle larger than half a millimeter in in the most flushing liquid diameter in our area. Uh, most TP associated with fine particles that cannot be screened out by a screen. The advanced uh, separate technology needed to capture more TP from flush and liquid air manure. Uh, this project, uh, we got uh, money from Western Sarah. We really appreciate that. I think with that, any kind of question or, or suggesting comments on, on this work? Yes, Jeff. For a couple questions. Quick question on, you know, when you're looking at your particle size density, I noticed that, that the DD farm was had much, much larger particles on the larger side. It, it, did you happen to determine how often they had, uh, or how long they've been using the solid materials, so the, the dried, dried the manure solids for their bedding? Because uh, I guess the, what I understand that the trend is over time, your, your solids will get smaller and smaller because you keep re reusing. I was just wondering if DD has not been using dried manure solids as maybe as long as some of the others have. That's a good point. You know, I, I don't have this information right now. Yeah. We didn't check that. But we just, when we get a manure back, we just noticed on the top there are just uh, longer fiber. We know that must be from the bedding fiber, not the undigested fiber from their manure. So that's why I think that's have a higher uh, group, higher solid in the four millimeter group, but not necessarily the TN link with that. One more question if there is. All right. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your time. <laughs>